In this podcast episode, Whitney Webb joins Tom Bilyeu to explore the intricate dynamics of financial and political power in the United States. She delves into the significant role of BlackRock in economic crises, the implications of COVID-19 policies, the influence of Wall Street insiders in government, and the looming threat of an economic downturn. Webb also addresses issues of wealth inequality, surveillance, and the exploitation of natural resources, advocating for self-sufficiency and crisis preparedness as essential strategies for the future. Webb emphasizes BlackRock's significant influence during economic downturns, particularly its involvement in the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic. She explains that BlackRock has positioned itself as a go-to advisor for the U.S. government during times of financial distress. This relationship raises concerns about the potential for conflicts of interest, as the firm often prioritizes the interests of Wall Street over those of Main Street. Webb argues that BlackRock's strategies, such as the going direct approach, have facilitated wealth transfers from the public to private entities, exacerbating economic inequality. The COVID-19 pandemic served as a critical juncture for economic policy, with BlackRock playing a pivotal role in shaping the government's response. Webb points out that the fiscal measures implemented during this time disproportionately benefited large corporations and financial institutions rather than the average American. The policies enacted under the guise of economic relief resulted in a massive wealth transfer, with the top 1% reaping the rewards while many ordinary citizens faced financial hardship. This dynamic highlights the systemic issues within the U.S. economic framework, where the interests of the elite often overshadow the needs of the general populace. Webb elaborates on BlackRock's pervasive influence on U.S. fiscal policy, noting that both Democratic and Republican administrations have turned to the firm for guidance. She highlights the troubling trend of appointing Wall Street insiders to key government positions, which perpetuates a cycle of regulatory capture. This revolving door between Wall Street and Washington raises questions about the integrity of policy decisions and the extent to which they serve the public interest. Webb argues that this pattern undermines democracy and contributes to a system that prioritizes corporate profits over the welfare of citizens. As the podcast progresses, Webb expresses her belief that an economic crisis is inevitable, regardless of the outcome of the upcoming presidential election. She cites the unsustainable levels of U.S. government debt and the historical precedent of economic downturns as indicators of impending financial turmoil. She warns that the next administration, whether led by Trump or Kamala Harris, will likely face significant challenges in addressing the economic fallout. This expectation underscores the need for a critical examination of the policies and practices that have led to the current state of affairs. Webb discusses the emotional responses that often accompany crises, suggesting that fear and panic can hinder rational decision-making. She argues that during times of uncertainty, people may clamor for immediate solutions without fully considering the long-term implications of those solutions. This emotional dynamic can lead to the acceptance of policies that further entrench the power of elites while diminishing individual freedoms. Webb emphasizes the importance of maintaining a level-headed approach to crisis management, advocating for informed discussions about potential solutions. Webb addresses the mismanagement of taxpayer money, citing instances where public funds have been squandered or misallocated. She references research indicating that trillions of dollars in taxpayer money have gone unaccounted for, raising questions about the transparency and accountability of government spending. She argues that this mismanagement not only erodes public trust, but also exacerbates economic inequality, as resources intended for public benefit are diverted to serve the interests of the elite. The discussion also touches on the intersection of social media and government surveillance. Webb highlights research funded by the U.S. Air Force that explores how social media can be used to manipulate public opinion and behavior. She warns that this manipulation can lead to a form of mind control where individuals are influenced by curated information that shapes their perceptions of reality. She emphasizes the need for vigilance in the face of these developments, 
as they pose significant risks to individual autonomy and freedom of thought. Webb delves into the impact of U.S. government debt and military spending on the economy. She argues that the relentless pursuit of military hegemony has contributed to the ballooning national debt, diverting resources away from essential social programs. This militarization of the economy, coupled with the prioritization of defense spending, has profound implications for the well-being of ordinary Americans. She contends that the government's focus on military expenditures undermines its ability to address pressing domestic issues. The podcast explores the potential for hyperinflation of the U.S. dollar as a consequence of unsustainable debt levels. Webb explains that the government's reliance on printing money to service its debt could lead to a devaluation of the currency, eroding the purchasing power of everyday Americans. In this context, she discusses the role of cryptocurrencies, particularly Bitcoin, as a potential hedge against inflation. She argues that Bitcoin's finite supply makes it an attractive alternative for those seeking to preserve their wealth in an increasingly unstable economic environment. Webb raises concerns about the growing surveillance state in Latin America, particularly in the context of digital IDs and biometric tracking. She warns that these developments could lead to increased government control over individuals' lives, limiting their freedoms and privacy. She emphasizes the need for awareness and resistance to these trends, as they threaten to undermine democratic principles and individual rights. The discussion also touches on the exploitation of natural resources in developing countries, particularly in Latin America. Webb argues that the financialization of nature, where natural assets are commodified and traded, often leads to the disenfranchisement of local communities. She highlights the need for equitable policies that prioritize the interests of indigenous populations and ensure that they benefit from the resources in their regions. She contends that the current system disproportionately favors multinational corporations at the expense of local communities. Webb also emphasizes that this trend could lead to environmental degradation and exploitation. She argues that the commodification of natural resources often prioritizes profit over sustainability, resulting in detrimental consequences for ecosystems and communities. She emphasizes the importance of developing policies that protect the environment while also ensuring economic fairness for local populations. Webb discusses the close ties between Silicon Valley and the military intelligence complex, highlighting how major tech companies often collaborate with government agencies. She warns that this relationship can lead to the erosion of privacy and civil liberties as companies prioritize government contracts over the interests of their users. She argues that individuals should be aware of these connections and seek alternatives that prioritize user privacy and autonomy. In conclusion, Webb advocates for self-sufficiency and crisis preparedness as essential strategies for navigating the uncertain future. She encourages individuals to build resilient communities and develop skills that promote independence from centralized systems. By fostering local networks and prioritizing self-reliance, individuals can better withstand the challenges posed by economic crises and government overreach.